the extraordinary belongs to those that create it. Rebelling against business plans and debt, rebelling against what society expects of us to build cool businesses, make money, have fun and do good. Let's create something extraordinary together. Welcome to The Rebel Entrepreneur. Welcome to The Rebel Entrepreneur and a special episode where we have back with us Danny from the Rebel Columbia team. Welcome back to the show, Danny. Hello, Alan. I'm really, really happy to be here again. And I'm already missing you because you left Colombia. I did. I did. Uh, we went to Uruguay. It just wasn't as good. Sorry, Uruguay. Um, but it just <laughs> wasn't as good. I miss you too. I miss Colombia. Um, but I'm, I'm really glad you're here. The purpose of the episode is to talk about how you have built the Rebel Business School in Colombia, because I think there's a whole bunch of things you have been through building that business from scratch that's going to inspire everyone listening to the podcast. But before we mm -hmm. get there, we were talking about the social media day and social media, mm -hmm. and you're quite allergic to most social media platforms. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah, that's something that <laughs> kind of... Uh... Not a cool thing that I have, but you have to live with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's something lots of us go through is social media is one of those things that you have a love-hate relationship with and mm -hmm. it can suck up your life and it can change things. But we were talking about the importance of you doing some of the social media day. And I said, well, like, if you don't want to use it for your personal life, I get that, but it's quite a useful business tool. And I told Absolutely. you and Laura, the uh, the Rebel Columbia team, about the LinkedIn episode that Patrick Venn did. It's season two of Christina's uh, coaching series. It was episode five, all about the LinkedIn mm -hmm. strategy. Um, and you both went off and listened to that, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We listened to it and it was like a game-changing experience. We had been already using a little bit of LinkedIn, like uh, updating it, optimi optimizing it so that um, we had a more, uh, well, so we could reach more people and tell them about the great things we are doing uh, from here in Rebel Colombia. But definitely hearing that, that a podcast was just like, wow, it gave us like a really cool, uh, fun and easy to implement strategy and, and free because it doesn't cost one penny. We like free. And we have, been, <laughs> we have been using it, Alan, for the last month, and it's been just amazing. I mean, the results, I, I can't believe them myself. Uh, so I think, like, just before you tell us the results, for me, there's two ways to use social media. There is passive and there is active. And passive is putting out an update and letting people read it, because you're just kind of, like, putting it out there and mm -hmm. waiting. Uh, and then there's active, which everyone says they don't have time for, which is messaging individuals, talking to people, sending direct messages, the video strategy from that LinkedIn episode. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think I've always got this drive to get people to do more active marketing. And you did it. What was it like sending the first video? Do you remember sending the first video? <laughs> I remember sending the first video. And even I use it as an example in the Rebel course here in Colombia. <laughs> and I show people the first video uh, with one intention. And it's to show them that it's the most, uh, I mean, it's the video most apart from perfect that it can possibly exist. I mean, it's really bad. I'm, I mean, I look scared in that video. Like, I actually don't look good. And that video got me the first meeting. So I'm showing yeah. them, like, look, yeah, yeah, yeah. If I could do it with this video is not the best quality is not my best face and i was afraid but if i can't do it you can also do it so that's why i use that video as an example i love that so what like what actually persuaded you to go through with it to get through the awkwardness and uncomfortableness of recording yourself on video and sending it through linkedin what what sold it to you other than me threatening you slightly <laughs> um well we wanted to use linkedin but not in the same way like everybody uses it. Like, I mean, if you're on LinkedIn and you add somebody new and you want to connect with maybe a potential client, 
you will normally just send an invitation and just maybe send a message, try to make it uh, the most interesting possible, but that's it. Uh, we wanted to do something different. And what uh, in the first place catch my, my attention was like, oh, this is very different, but this is quite easy and quite straightforward and let's just do it. So let's give it a try. Let's give it a try. And obviously you insisting, you and Simon insisting a lot, that was also <laughs> part of it. If you're listening to this podcast right now, I'm insisting that you have a go at this. Uh, it's worth <laughs> a go. What have you got to lose? So Danny, tell us the results. What actually happened? Tell us the results. Well, the results were project. amazing. Like we are selling uh, Revel Business School programs here in Colombia. And, you know, well, as any other project or any other entrepreneurship um, process, like we need to sell, we need money, we need this to work. So, and selling is always hard, it's always difficult, but there are, there are ways of doing it that, I mean, can take you closer to clients. And that's what we learned with this strategy. Uh, we want to sell these programs to, and we, um, to potential fintechs, uh, companies, fintechs, uh, unicorns that uh, are arising here in Colombia. There's a, a huge fintech boom. These are companies that have money. These are companies that they have products and services that can also apply and help entrepreneurs. So we think it's a good match and we just need to contact them. But we don't know a lot of people working in this industry. So LinkedIn, the LinkedIn strategy was a very good one to get like uh, through a first batch of these companies and get to contact them. And we we shortlisted like around 16, 17, it was at the end, I think like 17 companies um, in this strategy. Uh, and the next step was obviously adding people from those companies on LinkedIn. We reached around 55. We sent 55 invitations because one of the recommendations is invite Many people, not everybody is going to accept your invitation. So mm -hmm. we sent to that invitation to 55. Uh, that invitation was accepted by 37. So that's already a good percentage. Like I think, uh, I mean, uh, and that's part of also having your LinkedIn uh, profile uh, well built and at least like updated because people see like, okay, this is a real person and it's a person that is like, um, well, it's doing stuff and it's uh, interacting with the, uh, with other people. And that's when the fun starts because of the 37 people that accepted and um, the invitation. Well, the, this is the part that gets you a little bit uncomfortable. Like you have to send the video and this is a personalized video. And like, I mean, uh, you know it better than any anyone. And this is all explained in the podcast that I strongly also recommend people to hear it, to hear that episode. Well, you have to send a personalized video, but it's also a video where you do the homework, where you do some research about the person, about the company, about the latest posts, about how uh, that person has interacted with other people. And this is what, it, I mean, you have to put a lot of effort into that, but it's the best way of connecting because you do the homework, because you actually care. And when you care, that generates confidence and confidence at the end, like we say it all the time in, at the business courses, confidence will get you the person attention and will, will open like the channel of communication. So we sent the videos, Alan, it was, it was, it was, we sent 16 and this is the most amazing result from those 16 videos sent. We got a response of 80%, that's almost 13 responses people that actually said like oh daniel uh that's cool uh let's talk more about it or let's do a call or i want to introduce you to this other person in the company that is very suited to talk about this so it was i mean uh, i think I, and i was like updating you on the results like every week and i was like alan <laughs> the percentage is 30 and i was surprised when it was 30 then it's 50 then it's 70 and it, i mean at the end the final uh, um a statistic i have is that it's 81 percentage so i mean like when i tell this to marketing people i i, I tell them like what marketing strategy gives you an 80 percent response rate when it's like cold marketing when you are reaching for the first time and that it costs absolutely zero and they will i mean they can never <laughs> answer that question because this is just amazing that's unbelievable that kind of result 
so I've got to ask, because I'm sure this is going through everyone's head out there. What did you say in these videos to get 81%? <laughs> Were you wearing clothes? What did you do? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I follow, I actually follow very thoroughly um, the suge- the recommendations of the of the podcast episode. Like first, uh, do like break the ice with a, a, a quick introduction of like, look, I know this is weird, but it's also a new, cool, fun, different way to connect. Then I showed them that I did the homework and I told them like, for example, uh, one of the companies that I contacted, they even published a website to help entrepreneurs. So I was like, Oh, hey, I saw that you publish your company published this website and that you do this. And that's the way of showing like I did the homework. I care. I know this about you. And now the third step was connecting it with <clears throat> Rebel Colombia and the Rebel Colombia strategy. Like, OK, you do this and we'll do this. Let's do something cool together. And that was the, the like the way of wrapping up the whole message. And it was just, just, I mean, the response rate were, and all the responses were positive. I mean, not even, I mean, there were like responses of following up of, I want to know more. Even if some of the meetings we had afterwards, we, at the end, we couldn't work, which all sometimes happened. But I mean, the purpose of grabbing the other person's attention uh, was happening and was a success. I love that because it's never all going to work out. You're never going to win every customer. That is life. But what we're trying Mm -hmm. to do is get in the door and connect uh, and just getting attention in a world of busy messages. Just getting attention is unbelievable. And it was funny because I even got one one of the responses um, that I got was from like a marketing because we were targeting mar- the marketing leaders or ma- marketing managers in those companies. And one marketing person, like she replied back and she had like, she said like, okay, you really grabbed my attention. This is actually a very interesting like marketing strategy, like congratulations on being, on you doing something different. And I was like, wow, she was even like congratulating me for implementing this so that was so cool i love that so congratulations on the strategy and if you are listening to this and you haven't done it please have a go that's all we ask is run a mini experiment identify a bunch of clients add them send them a video after you've done some research and connect and see what happens it's free what have you got to lose what have you got to lose? Um, and that's what Danny and I wanted to say at the start of this podcast. So let's rewind the clock back to the start. Uh, cause I'm really intrigued cause it's quite a big project launching a business and you've kind of got some ideas from us when we chatted to you and we gave you some ideas at the start, but, I don't even know what country I was in, but Simon was in England. Like we weren't with you. We weren't there supporting you. Mm -hmm. What was it like just sort of having to magic this up from nothing? Because you had the content, but that's not getting the customer. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. No, it was. I think, uh, and also like uh, thinking uh, on those, on those times where, I mean, it was really like we were just starting. We were understanding what Rebel is. I think it was really confusing uh, at the beginning because, I mean, this is something that it's really out of the box. It's really different. And it was difficult to understand. Even like you said, we had the content. We did, we even did the first program here during the pandemic in one of the worst times here in Colombia. And uh, I mean, doing it, having it, having the content and everything is just like, I mean, it's not the, like the the guarantee that you'll get it together. And I've often told you, um, Alan, that even we did the first program, but then some months later you came to Colombia. And that was the first time when you wa- were here, when we talked with clients together, when I heard you like in person, it was the first time that everything clicked together. So it was building mm-hmm. towards that moment of making it uh, click. And what was making it click, like really understanding, like, okay, the rebel philosophy is really, I mean, it's really different. It's not what you are used to in the entrepreneurship world, in the academic world, or even in the government uh, work. Uh, So it's really different, but to really grasp it, to understand it, I mean, you have to live it, but live it, you have to hear it, you have to um, 
go to clients, go to entrepreneurs, see exactly how this is helping them and have the real life examples, hear them. And that's when like the magic happens. So it was at the first, at first, very confusing, very difficult to yeah. grasp. <laughs> That's not great feedback for us that we weren't able to explain it to you. Um, that does make sense. But it's not your fault. It's like it's, it's the preconceptions we have. And, and we have talked and we have reflected a lot about this. Like it's, it's the world has always told you that to create a business, you need money. And then Rebel Business School comes with these completely groundbreaking ideas of that you don't you need an investment, you don't need money. And it's difficult. I mean, it's really difficult. You can understand it and you can say, okay, yeah, I mean, you don't need money. Better than put it, I mean, really give a real life example or, I mean, uh, do it yourself and start Rebel Colombia without money. And that's when you start like, okay, this is not as simple as it sounds. Uh, let's find out. Let's discover uh, how it is done. Which you've been through that painful process of just, generating customers from nothing and finding a way to get going and sales first was always the way mm -hmm. i do think the people listening to this what i'd love you to take away from what danny said is get around people who are doing what you do hear what they say surround yourself with people who are successful building the business you want to build because you will learn pieces of language, things they say, different ways of thinking about stuff. So the more you can spend time around people who have done what you're trying to do, the better. Because there's this expression of success leaves clues. Like you will get to know, oh, this worked for that person. This worked for that person. But exactly where we started the episode with the LinkedIn strategy. Like, oh, mm -hmm. this has worked. This worked to connect with these companies and do this. So it like leaves clues and traces and things you can follow. Uh, exactly. And, it, and it, sometimes it really surprises you. And I, I think I, I often also uh, told you this, that... I mean, you will, you, when we had a meeting or we had a situation here in Colombia, you will often say like, okay, we also go, went through that in England or we uh, had that same situation. And it often works out like this. And it was completely like, I mean, it was even like a little bit scary how uh, <laughs> it, <laughs> it exactly developed as, as, as you said. And I was like, hmm, uh, either Alan has the power of, I don't know, foreseeing the future or like he just has like, you are saying the experience and you know how it is to build this from scratch. It's interesting. I definitely don't have the power to foresee the future. I'd be a lot wealthier <laughs> if I did. Um, but it is interesting. The thing that I've learned is a chambers of commerce is a chambers of commerce. Like it doesn't matter whether it's the US, whether it's Colombia, whether it's the UK, like they seem to act in the same way. And a university is a university like they all seem to think and act in the same way around the world. And I've, I found that fascinating because like, I didn't know it would go that way, but I definitely was able to say to you, look, in the UK, this happened. In the US, this happened. I'm pretty sure the university's motivations are this and this is what they're going to say to you. And it did turn out that that was pretty much the case most of the times but that's only because i've exactly. been through it so many times it hurts like i had to do a lot to learn <laughs> that kind of thing that you just experience no, and, I, and i think you have to go through that same process like i mean we have learned a lot um the position we are now and the way we sell real business school colombia is completely different as when we started or at least even one year ago like we know i mean we know how this works we know the the how rebel business school is just great it really helps people uh we have done already many programs in different cities in colombia and just looking at the expression of of people that have gone through the programs looking at their energy how they are so thankful with what we have done and how we would have helped them I even i remember we did this course in medellin and medellin is like the um, 
the most entrepreneurial city of Colombia. And we were a little bit scared, like, oof, this is going to be like a, a test because if we do a good job in Medellin, I'm sure we can do a good job in, in, in all the country. And after doing the program in Medellin, we got such, such an amazing feedback. Like people would say, like, we have done a lot of, and I remember this comment that I have done a lot of entrepreneurship programs, but this is the one that really, I mean, I got out of the program with the clarity on my mind of what to do next, of what are the next steps and the motivation, and I'm going to do it. And I didn't pay. <laughs> that's, <laughs> I mean, that, that's like, wow. I mean, I, I, another person like said, also said like, I've paid for programs in which I have learned like not even uh, half of what I learned here. So that's, I mean, those are the comments that are uh, like really, really motivate us. So whilst you were building Rebel Columbia, was there ever any points where you thought, this is, this is not for me, this is too tough, I'm out? Were there any points that you felt like you were going to give up? There were. There were, yeah. We had a lot <laughs> <Many>. of... Many. <laughs> yes. the, the, confidence, the confidence was there, but the lack of results in the beginning like really hurts that confidence. Yeah? Mm. And... We had those moments, and I remember this particular point where we were like negotiating with a university, and we wanted to do the first program. And I, I, I remember that we were considering even charging for the, for the, um, for one of the rebel programs, charging the entrepreneurs, which is like, uh, rebel rule number one is don't charge uh, to people. Yeah, and we were considering, and the fact that we were considering shows that we were losing a little bit of faith. On it, yes. yeah, and those were the hard moments. And I remember having a call with you and Simon and the whole team, and you were like, "No, don't do it." Like, I mean, remain uh, consistent. Re I mean, like, uh, don't like move from that point because it's important that we keep this free. And yeah, I mean, those were the difficult moments. Or was the moments what we were not sure where we were changing the whole model just to make it work. But I mean, at the end. I mean, consistency, consistency and confidence at the end, will it work out. So what kept you going? Because you've had these, how long did you go? Because we got the first sale very early on. You got the first sale, you ran mm -hmm. the first course in the capital. It was incredible. I saw the pictures of everyone socially distanced in the room with masks on. You ran at the height of the pandemic. Like, mm -hmm. you know, unbelievable what you did. But from that point, how long was it till the next sale? To the next sale, it was uh, one year, one month. One so it year, was a lot. one month? Yeah, it was a lot. It wow. was a lot. And... Um... I mean, what for that year, I mean... What that year, one month, I mean, we like break it into parts. The first part was still understanding, still getting to, I mean, to know Revel like very thoroughly of the whole philosophy and then convincing ourselves that there was a huge opportunity and go out and sell because we were doing also other stuff. I mean, I was working as a teacher. Well, I'm still do because I love teaching. But at that point I was, uh, well, working with a university. I had also another project, but I mean, like halfway through that year, it was there was this point that we decided, like, okay, let's go like full throttle uh, on 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 selling Rebel. Like, there's a huge opportunity. Uh, we even had a, a really good contact with the UK embassy here in Colombia, and we launched Rebel Colombia with the ambassador uh, here, and it was a great experience. Also, um, something that pushed us was your visit uh, of you and Katie. Uh, to Colombia uh, to get in, to know for the first time this country and that was really important for in this process so like I did I will divide that year in in two the first half was still very blurry we didn't have the whole info we were not still a hundred percent convinced and then the next half we went like full gas like let's do this let's do the launch let's get uh, the first customer the first client and if you I mean from that point on things uh, like starting, like really uh, working for us. Yeah, because I think I started pushing a bit. It's like, I'm coming to Colombia, use me. And I kept repeating mm -hmm. that, like, <laughs> take me to meetings, do things, use me, come on, I'm coming, let's do this. So we had and that. We used you. You did. I enjoyed it. <laughs> we used you a lot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but 
but that sort of energy got things to go. Um, who was the second client? Who was the second client you landed? So the second client is this amazing um, ONG called WWF, the uh, World Wild Fund. Um, it, this is just a, an amazing client. I mean, uh, this is uh, an NGO that wants uh, and promotes, and its first objective is is to be environmentally friendly, and they are doing a lot of work in Colombia. Uh, but they know that, I mean, to people to really change into more um, an environmental behavior, they need to work that change uh, from uh, young people and they need to work with them because they are the future of the country. So they wanted to do something with them, but not the typical uh, environmental campaign or a uh, campaign on YouTube that they have been doing for years. They wanted to do something with more impact. So they contacted us. Oh, well, I mean, it wasn't. They didn't contact us. We did the whole <laughs> sales uh, process and it was an a eight month sale. I mean, from the first day I wow. contacted them to offer our service to the day we closed the deal, it was eight months. And sometimes these sales are like that. I mean, you know that. Um, but they, when they contacted us is when they had the budget, when they really want to make it work. And we developed a, an entrepreneurship rebel program with them to help all these young people that have want to do good things for the environment that have their own or their entrepreneurship processes and projects and are building cool products and services related to to green businesses and we did the first program with them and they wanted to reach people around the country so we did the first like batch of three programs in Bogota Medellin and Bucaramanga and it was just insane insane <laughs> what was insane? What What do you mean it was insane? You can't leave us there well, and just go, it was insane. I'm not <laughs> telling you anything else. <laughs> it was insane because it was the, like first the first program we sold, but it was it wasn't the, like the easiest client uh, in the first place because they wanted to change a little bit of, of the stuff of the program so that it was more uh, focused on sustainability. Mm. So it was difficult at, at the start, like to get, I mean, at the end, they are the ones paying for it. So I mean, we have to make them happy. So we needed to include sustainability. And then it was really cool because we learned a lot of, about sustainability. And this is something that I haven't told you before, but we are thinking in rural Colombia of putting sustainability as a regular topic on the rural programs because we are so convinced by what we did with WWF that this is, this is not only exclusive uh, to entrepreneurs that are working with environmental issues. This must be done by everybody because that's the only way we are really going to save uh, the planet, not for the sake of saving the planet, because that's one of the big insights. You don't, and, and the new policy of WWF is don't save the world for the sake of the world, save it for your own sake, because otherwise you are not going to have a a place to live yeah and that's what we are teaching entrepreneurs and we are teaching them the real way how to be sustainable in the real way how to really go out and don't you don't just do like a, a philanthropic action or do something that is really important for the business that gives you more clients that gives you better reputation and that was that was really insane but it was a really good uh, experience and we got amazing results I love it. I feel like uh, one of the actions from this is uh, speaking to Simon and telling him to include sustainability on the UK course uh, and mm -hmm. reflecting that around the world. Um, and I feel like we should uh, ask the WWF to come on and tell us why they've sponsored an entrepreneurship course, because that would be a fascinating, fascinating Let's do that. conversation. Let's do that. Yes. Um, so question for you before we get on to the Cali course and what you've learned helping people, like it was an eight month sales process mm -hmm. and you spent a year between the first and the second client just going out there and selling, 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 selling. Did you consistently keep selling or were there points where you went, I'm just having a month focusing on teaching and I'm just going to put this down? Like, how did you keep going? What was it actually like at the coal face of building this business? Mm -hmm. That's that, that's a good question because I think it's, and this is also very real, but I think it's consistency, uh, what gets you there and gets you to, obviously I'm telling you that we got this 
next client, but it wasn't the only one that we were talking to. There were at least like three dozens other companies that we were reaching, contacting mm -hmm. and following up uh, like on a regular basis. Um, I think this, this, uh, the WWF program, uh, before we sold that program, I think that I contacted them at least like eight times, like of following up wow. of even like even shortly once a month. Um, and, and yeah, we were also talking to all, many other companies. We were a little bit like shooting like around to many companies to see who would like, uh, really be interested. And I know that's not the best strategy because you have to focus, but we were, but it um, happens we at working. the start. You yeah, have to reach exactly. out. Like, how do you know? You like, you've got to reach scale. And I think that was actually a mistake I made in the early days was I would just contact five people and then wait to see if they'd come back. Like, you, mm -hmm. you can't do that. You've got to go out and ask lots of people. Otherwise, you'll never exactly. find you'll never find your WWF. They're hiding out there, waiting for you. You've got to find them. That's that's the point. I mean, they are waiting for you. Uh, they will maybe not reply very fast. Uh, but that's something that we <laughs> teach in Rebel Business School. Like people sometimes are busy, sometimes are lazy. Sometimes they uh, have 200 emails in their inbox. So it's not that they are bad people. It's not that they don't want to reply to you. It's that they just need the time and they need for you, you to follow up so that they will do it. And yes, that landed us the first project with all F, but also landed us the second next project with uh, an amazing NGO here in Colombia called Compass, which is um, Expresident Santos NGO. He won the Nobel Prize for in Peace, and he founded that uh, this NGO. And that was a, the, our, se our second contract, which also happened. It didn't happen in one day or in one month. It was a six-month process from the first day I contacted through LinkedIn, not with a video, because I didn't know that strategy at that point. <laughs> it was a boring <laughs> message. But uh, at least it got me uh, it worked. the first inter. It worked. It worked. And that is the second uh, project that we are uh, going to execute next week. So tell us about that project. Like you, yeah, you yeah. sent them a LinkedIn message. They replied. Um, mm -hmm. What is the project? What are you actually doing with them? So this, this NGO, they are working with um, displaced people. Uh, this in Colombia, well, we had a, um, a 50 year long uh, civil war between the guerrillas, between the government, with, between the other militarized organizations. And though we signed a peace agreement in 2016, the basis of the peace uh, and the basis of that agreement and the warranty that war is not going to repeat itself. The warranty is if we develop the country and if we help people, the people that are less favored, that didn't have the opportunities, we help them with their uh, lives and with their businesses. So basically the most, the core uh, way of securing peace in Colombia is development and it's uh, helping them with their businesses and their economies. Uh, so that's the, the, the mission of Compass, of this NGO. So they work a lot with uh, displaced people, with uh, ex-militia that have to go back to regular life. And that's crazy because it's a crazy population. I mean, it's, they have a lot of potential um, and we are going to help them to build their businesses. We are going to help them to construct uh, peace, the peace of Colombia through uh, helping them with their, that their business works, that they give, they can leave from those projects, from those um that's those, I mean, that they have really a real income and so that they don't go to illicit activities. So it's something that really excites us. It's frightening because, uh, I mean, this is not the regular people that have all the opportunities in the world. These are people that maybe don't know how to use a computer or maybe don't have a phone. And so how are you going to teach them how to sell through social media? So there's, I mean, there's a lot of Good potential, question. but... That's a good question. Good question. <laughs> Tell me how you're going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we are doing it on a very simple basis. Like we are not going to go very complex on social media. We are going, even if we just ha need to teach them how to sell through WhatsApp and maybe build uh, their own catalog on, on Canva or something very quick or take a picture and then just uh, send it through WhatsApp. That's even a way of getting clients because at the end of the day, WhatsApp is the most used 
uh, uh, like um, social media platform here in Colombia. And even if you don't have Facebook, Instagram, or LinkedIn, uh, most probably you'll still have uh, WhatsApp. And even if they don't have WhatsApp, I mean, we'll figure it out the real way, like how to be resourceful and how to get those clients. But but it's exciting. It's exciting because we are really helping interpret people that are really need this help that uh, they need a different way of approaching business. They don't want to do business plans because they don't know how to do business plans. They maybe don't understand what's a business model or the different blocks of a complex business model. They need to live from their, from their projects and they need to generate income. They need to generate it fast because they don't have a lot of savings. So, I mean, like the rebel course is perfect for them. So we are excited. Because if we help them, we are helping the actual peace construction of Colombia. And this is just overwhelming. What a fantastic goal. Because I do genuinely believe the world will be a happier place if people have the opportunity to make their own money doing something they love and don't feel confined Mm -hmm. by having to do other things to get money or having to wait for money to be given to them to be able to get opportunity. Like, let's free people to do actually what they need to do. And I think in general, the world will be a happier place if we can do that. I love that you're doing it to support the peace process. Like, what a phenomenal, phenomenal thing. Absolutely. Like, yeah, I mean, I will tell you, let's see how it goes because it's it's next week, it's in Medellin. Uh, but we have already more than 70 people signed up for the for the event, so we are really excited. Fantastic. So are you getting a similar turnout rate to what we do with about 50% show up because it's a free ticket? 50%. It's the, <laughs> the same. <laughs> it's the same as, as, as in, in England. <laughs> it's really interesting, isn't it? Humans and how we work and what happens. Um, so where's, where's the future of this for you? Where are you going with this? Like, what are you building with Rebel in Colombia? Where we are building, first, we are genuinely and we are really helping people to start their business with another mentality, with the rebel mentality. Uh, Here in Colombia, there are really good universities. The government has really cool public entities and they support entrepreneurship, but they have done it the traditional way. So when people come to our courses, they feel the energy they get amazed, they have fun, and they discover that building a business is not that complex. It requires a lot of work, but it's not that complex. And they get to have the clarity on their minds on what are the next steps that they need to go to sell. That's the most important thing. They need need to start to execute, yeah? That they they can start a website in one day and then sell to their clients through Instagram and through LinkedIn with just a video. And it's all free and they don't need a lot of investment. They don't need even uh, to waste their savings or even worse to get a loan to start a business. So we are changing the way people are starting a business. We want to think also that we are revolutionizing the way entrepreneurship is taught. That is something that we share as a mission with you guys um, worldwide. And it's really exciting. Like um, what we are doing, I'm more convinced than ever that we are really helping, that we are really uh, improving people's lives. Uh, I've seen other programs. I, I still am a teacher at a university. I know what the university is doing. And like, I mean, what we are doing is golden. Like, I mean, the quality, uh, the energy that we do it and the response we get is just like, I mean, like, wow, what a great, great, great work. So. Has it not worked for someone in Colombia? Like you've gone out and you've taught it, you've done five or six courses. Give me like, it can't work for everyone, can it? Yeah, no, I mean, we all sometimes have the people that are still very skeptical. Like they are like, hmm, uh, hmm, I don't know. This sounds too good to be true. Um, Even at one of the programs, we had a this entrepreneur guy uh, who wanted to start a fintech company. And, you know, like fintechs look like they are really complex and that uh, they require a lot of investment. Uh, 
and even like these type of persons that we thought like hmm, okay maybe they won't really uh, learn a lot here or, or they won't really go and apply what they learn but even this person was really like surprised like okay he stayed for the whole program which already gives you a sense that they are really learning and at the end he was really happy with it and he was going to apply maybe he still needs an investment because this is a fintech and they need a lot of investment sometimes in platform but he understands that he can test some things quicker than before building everything and committing a lot of money into it so yeah there's the skeptical but even the most uh the projects that you will consider uh like the, that example that won't apply that much I, I mean we are helping them also so that's why i'm so positive about it i love that and uh, one of the things that i've learned over the years is when you're delivering a workshop to an audience there will always be the skeptics and they will always mm -hmm. be skeptical they're there and then there's the other people there's the confused uh, and they will always be confused by what you say. And there's nothing I can do about that. I can try in yeah. many different ways. And there's the skeptics, there's the confused, there's the uh, enthusiastic. And they are just mm -hmm. enthusiastic people. And you turn up and they'll be enthusiastic about whatever you say. And they will make progress because of their enthusiasm. And you just need to stay yeah. consistent to your message and keep helping people because... Those groups will always be there, no matter what course you run or where you work. Mm -hmm. And there's also the people that sometimes like, uh, like don't believe that it's like that this is too good to be true. And I remember this mm -hmm. participant, and she was really excited the first day of coming to our, to the course and everything. And she said like, because we always promote like if they do want to bring somebody like um, come with them uh, the next day. And she said like I want to bring my mom because um, she will love this and everything. So the next day, I mean, I arrived at the program and we started and that, and she was there. And I was like, okay, cool. Like in front of everyone, like, where's your mom? I mean, we're waiting for her. And she was like, no, she didn't want to come. And I was like, but what, what happened? And she was like, no, because it's free. Uh, she didn't believe that. It, I mean, she said like, that's too good to be true. They, I, I'm sure they're going to sell me something. I won't go. I won't go. And she didn't come because she thought she was going to <laughs> be insult something. And it was just crazy. I mean, people really don't. And they even had a fight because the daughter was like, Mom, if I'm telling you it's because it's true, it's it's good. They won't sell you something. <laughs> <laughs> and she still didn't come. There's, she, yeah, no, there's she very didn't. little you can do. It's fascinating. It is fascinating. Um, so tell us one of the businesses that you're most proud of. Like what's been the thing you're like, you've reached someone, you've helped them. What have you been most proud of? Uh, maybe it's from the last Cali course. Maybe it's from another mm -hmm. one. Who have you helped well, that you're like, proud? We, ha we have help. I mean, like already we have done not that many courses as, as you guys there in the UK and other countries. But I mean, we have already helped like such a variety of, of, of projects and entrepreneurs. Uh, for example, in Bucaramanga, one of the other cities here in Colombia, we help. Uh, um, this was this uh, this girl entrepreneur. Well, they had the, they are building their their project with her with her husband, and um, they were really afraid because they were selling sandwiches and they won a grant from the government to. Put, I mean, to start their restaurant. So they were like on that point where they were going to start it. Uh, they were really afraid. And I mean, exactly one month before the opening of the restaurant, they went to the course. They were like so thrilled. Uh, they gave us sandwiches. We helped them. We even had some follow up, a follow up session with them to help them prepare for the restaurant. And we helped them a lot because they were doing going doing that jump of like okay we already have a business that sells sandwiches too we are going to have our proper restaurant and it's scary but something that we help them a lot is to realize that they will have to change a little bit their prices and to really start charging what really needs to be charged for a good product as the one they have and she was literally like afraid like and i i remember telling her like look i mean it's it's afraid it, i mean sometimes the entrepreneur and the person behind it is afraid of uh, obviously uh, increasing the prices because you think like, okay, will people still buy me and everything? But look at the quality, the good at the, at the effort, look at the place that you are building and look 
I mean, sum up everything and it's worth the price. So we finally convinced them that, uh, I mean, they could charge a little bit higher and they opened the restaurant and it's been a great success and we are very happy, very happy for that. I love that. I love that because sometimes you're nervous. You're like, if I put my price up, will I lose all my customers? Will everyone leave? It's a scary Mm -hmm. moment to do that, to have that faith that you're actually delivering that quality product. Mm -hmm. And and you know, that's something, and I've worked with many entrepreneurs and I'm always surprised that they are very afraid or reluctant to increasing prices or to changing prices. And I think one of the biggest uh, challenges of entrepreneurs is that when you think of a price, you often think it as if you were the customer, but you are the entrepreneur, Mm -hmm. you are not the customer. The customer are maybe tourists that have a lot of money and want to spend money. And when you put in, I mean, when you think of yourself as if you were the customer, then obviously you will think, oh, maybe that's expensive, but it's not expensive for the actual customer. So you you have to remove that perspective from your head and, I mean, give it a shot, don't worry, like increase the a 10% on, on your price. And I mean, the worst case scenario is that some people you will, I mean, demand will decrease a little bit in the short ter- uh, term, but surely, uh, um, I mean, you'll get more sales afterwards. And there's only one way to know anyway, and that's to do a mini experiment, have a go and just put that price out there and see what happens. Only mm, one exactly. way to know. Um, this has been a tour de force of energy and I love it. Danny, before I wrap up with a few thoughts for everyone, like what would be your message to the entrepreneurs around the world? You've been on a, a couple of year adventure <laughs> building mm-hmm. Rebel Business School Columbia to this point where you're running courses around the country. Like it's been a phenomenal journey. What have you learned that you want to share with the audience around the world? I've learned a lot. I mean, I'm definitely like becoming a role myself. I've always been an entrepreneur. Uh, I could, you could say that I've been a traditionally educated entrepreneur, but in that traditional way, I have also discovered like some things don't work and sometimes my projects haven't worked and I have gone bankrupt and I have started again. But in the last year I have becoming, I, re- I have really become an entrepreneur. Um, I think and what nowadays I recommend uh, to people uh, in general is to, I mean, a part of obviously uh, going to the Rebel courses and listening to the Rebel podcast. Um, what I strongly recommend is, I mean, the, the art of execution. Like execution is just so, so important. I, and I have heard a lot of amazing ideas, amazing projects, uh, even like uh, astronomical numbers and uh, business plans that are just too good to be true. And it's always about execution, like let's start. And you are afraid of execution, like execution is scary sometimes because you are not ready because the timing is not perfect. And that's something that we, I love to teach uh, at Rebel. And that's why, for example, I delivered the website day and I don't know anything about designing. Um, <laughs> I don't know how to properly use Illustrator. I know a little bit of Photoshop because my dad was a photographer, but I actually have a business education. So like I show people that even I can build a website. So you can also do it. So you can build a website in one day. You can run a mini experiment. You can start an idea, but the most important thing is to execute and to do and to uh, complete the next task, uh, even if it's a little one but get going, get doing, and that will get you there. And the conversation will get obviously more fun if we talk about what we are doing, not what we are dreaming. And that's just uh, so cool. Danny, thank you for coming on the podcast, sharing your ideas, your energy. Uh, You are a Duracell bunny of energy, which I love. (laughs) Um, And Simon has started calling uh, me the English Danny and you the Colombian (laughs) Alan. Um, but I'm so impressed and for everyone else listening to this it is so much more fun to talk about what you're doing rather than what you're dreaming and that is the final point the difference between the people who live the lives they want to live and everyone else is they just take their dreams and do them so stop listening to us leave the podcast go out there and do it 
You can have any life you want to. Choose to build something cool. Choose to take action. Choose to work to make your dreams become reality. Stand out. Be different. Be yourself. Be a rebel entrepreneur.